He was he was so confident last time. He was Always so confident. confident. Like, oh, I'm guys, I the blazing wings I put in my reps. I got this, but like, I, I eat the blazing wings. The blazing fun. wings. <laughs> It prepares I do the you, blazing man. wings challenge. <laughs> it prepares you, man. Is that the, is that it? Is that the start? Reaper? Is yeah, that the rolling intro? The blazing wings. The blazing wing app. <laughs> I got well, this. Well, everybody, welcome back to Brainstorm Brewery. That's uh, the rolling intro there for you all. We're... Welcome to Blaze Storm Brewery. Oh we have gosh. JJ like play taps in the background, just like. <laughs> this is absurd. Anyways, welcome back, everybody. I'm Corbin. Joined by my co-host, Jason. Two guests this week, DJ and Josh Lee Kwai of the Command Zone, of Game Nights, of the, the panel hosting, and basically everything else these days. He's a busy man. Josh, welcome on, man. Welcome How's back, everybody? I suppose. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, Josh uh, Josh listened to our show and came on forever ago before before you know anyone cared about us. It was great. <laughs> you, I don't know what I don't know what went wrong in your life that you ended up hooked up with us, man, but we appreciate it. <laughs> I think it was something, something Vegas, something. Yeah, there, there might something. have been a Vegas or two, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not allowed to talk about This has gotta be like my fourth or fifth time on now. Like I feel like I've I mean I'm basically like the you've third co host. You've been on yeah. more than yeah. Corbin for sure. Sander yeah. check? Is this we need Sander. Sander Vanderzee probably definitely has a list of like most guest appearances you know what you haven't yeah. heard from sander they released a world of warcraft expansion and no one's heard from that guy since so oh really is that true yeah oh well he'll be back well, i mean least... what else are you gonna do when you're playing wow Yeah, people come back from playing wow all the time right like <laughs> <laughs> nobody's ever died because they forgot to eat because they were <laughs> speaking of eating i'm gonna do this a few <laughs> weeks ago we did the one chip challenge because we hit a some Patreon of us goal. Did the one chip challenge. Jason and I did the one chip challenge. We all did the one chip challenge. Some of us did it better than others. <laughs> um, you're so charitable. One fan in your descriptions a, when you talk about your own failures. I love this. It. Is a great story because one fan was so tilted by watching me drink milk. They just sent me a message and said, "Dude, what is your fucking address? I'm sending you a chip and give me the PayPal for the cast because I'm sending the cast fifty bucks." <laughs> and I was like, all right, man, I guess I have to do it again. So here we go. Got the chip. I really wish I could see this. Oh, I know. Too. I'm so sad I can't see it. Describe. Right. So when so, did you unseal this chip? I wonder, when did you crack I unsealed the, the chip about us? 10 minutes ago. So what you uh, did was you let all the capsaicin oxidize. That's not so. how it works, man. It he is. He replaced it with like a Doritos chip. <laughs> <laughs> this chip is from 2018. I I cracked the seal on camera. I think you should do this chip, but then afterwards, if, no, if our fans no, think no, there that will you be no opening more chips, the foil, man. if hey, if you open the foil ten minutes before the cast is okay with them, fine. Look, but if they think you need to do it again and have some integrity this time, well, that's up to them. There is zero chance that opening the bag means anything, man. That's just air. It's going on my mouth. <laughs> All right, let's see it. Anyways, all right. Jason made it one minute and seventeen seconds before drinking. DJ made it forty seconds or something. How so many seconds did you make it, Corbin? About two and a half. So you got to go at two and a half seconds. So you got to go like three minutes to average. No, I'm gonna go one minute and eighteen seconds. Now you got to average. This past chip, one by the way, everybody. Seconds. This chip is the 2018 version. So it is uh, possibly the 2017 version. You can have it. It's newer than the ones we had, which means it's hotter. Well, it's that's, been oxidizing well, that's for that's how that minutes, works. So. They, yeah, they make them hotter every year. <laughs> Here we go. Mm -hmm. Wow, even his chair's complaining. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the coughing. Does anybody timing this? I am. Oh, yeah, you can be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've swallowed the chip. Okay. <laughs> I'm holding up the stopwatch. <laughs> <laughs> this has been known to trigger heart attacks in people that aren't in very good shape, so... All right, we're 25 seconds in. I'm feeling good. Are you? Well, I'm feeling... Yeah, I'm feeling... <laughs> How much are you sweating right now? Are you sweating already? I'm starting to sweat, yeah. Yeah. Corbin's a fat guy in the South. He's sweating constantly. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to turn on this fan next to my chair here. <laughs> do you always have that there, or was this specifically for this challenge? Oh, no, I always do, but I turned it off so I could cast, but it's on. All right, I'm at 50 seconds. I've made it past DJ. Okay. 
What do I get if I just don't drink anything? Do I win everything? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Like for the entire cast? <laughs> <laughs> You regain a modicum of the respect that everyone lost for you. How about that? Oh. How's it feel? How's it feel in your mouth, Corbin? It's pretty warm. Oh, I'm feeling okay. Oh, while Corbin's drinking milk, I'm drinking Founders Curmudgeons. No, I'm have. past. I'm past Jason time. I'm good. Congrats, congrats, Corbin. I did it. And you know what? I'm not going to drink anything. Good. Really? Don't. Okay. I'm going to try so hard not to drink anything. But it's actually kind of rough because I went and got some ice cream, and now my ice cream's just going to melt if I don't eat it. So I'm kind of in an awkward position. Yeah, what if you had to throw away 35 cents worth of ice cream? Bro, I got a <laughs> pint. I prepared myself. I'm I'm reasonably impressed by your ability to have a conversation during this. I'm feeling yeah, fine. Yeah, TJ, was, you were pretty quiet. <laughs> I was just shoveling ice cream into my just, face. You just doubled over sad. How long do you guys think you could make it now, you know, having done it once before? I don't want to do it again, so... Well, I knew... I didn't know, like, at peak intensity that that was as hot as it was going to get. Because uh-huh. I, thought, I thought there was a chance it could get worse. Yeah, you so could I wanted to. Die. I wanted to just, like, try to attenuate it a little with, with some milk, but knowing how hot the max it gets, that it's just sort of, like, it's a little painful and pretty unpleasant, but, like, it's not going to get worse, and mm-hmm. it's not going to last for more than, like, ten minutes... I think I would do a much better job having done it before. I could probably go without milk, but like I wouldn't be happy. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> DJ, like you're just like never milk. again. Yeah, I'm not good with spicy food. <laughs> he looked like the, he was pepper sprayed. He looked bad. He was like <laughs> bent over at one point. The, he wasn't talking. The experience of doing the one chip challenge, I do not think, adequately prepared me for repeating the one chip challenge. <laughs> oh man, that chip was rough, guys. Oh, we did something similar on our show like once. Very much, so. Like, I'd eat another one right now, but I wouldn't love it. Like, how was oh. the flavor? Did it, like, have any actual flavor? No, you can't. Your mouth just lights on fire, and you can't. <laughs> That's Josh, my thing you, with like, Carolina ex- Reapers. Aren't I don't you, like, really, really like good at this? the flavor. What? Aren't you, like, really good at this? Don't you just Yeah, love- Jimmy and I had an episode once where we did something similar. Um, a fan had sent us. They worked at a, like, uh, like, a hot sauce company, and they sent us ghost pepper hot sauce. Okay. And Jimmy and I decided that we would, it was like a preview card episode, and we would just take a spoonful of the hot sauce straight Oof. And, try oh, to, and try to do the episode. And Jimmy was like, kind of, maybe kind of like you, DJ, where he was like dying. And he started sweating profusely within like five seconds to the point where we like sent somebody to go get paper towels because he was like literally like <laughs> dripping off the, off, the, off the tip of his nose and stuff. But yeah, I, I just continued to take spoonfuls of it throughout the episode. My mouth can handle it, but my stomach gets really mad later. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that that chip. For what it's worth, that chip was hotter maybe than the ones, but I think it was smaller. I think it was smaller. Corbin, if you really want to do the challenge, I want you to drink three beers tonight and then have your uh, beer dump in the morning to be caliente like mine. Was. Oh man, <laughs> oh, I, I, I was hungover and my daughter woke me up at like seven a.m. Was like, "Daddy, let's go play." I was like, "Daddy wants to die." <laughs> <laughs> I'm at four minutes and thirty seconds. I'm calling it a victory. So have you have you not consumed any dairy? In the I past? have drank no milk. I have eaten no ice cream. That's I have, I have sweat though. You're made of milk. <laughs> You're made. Of I milk. will I will credit you with regaining your honor. Oh, it was smaller than the other one, so it was easier to eat. And it broke in the bag too. There were two halves, so it was actually was actually able to get it all in my mouth at once, which probably helped. I could like kind of. Hold it all together rather than it just. I mean, I chewed on both sides of my mouth, but. <coughs> all right, he re- he has oh. redeemed as much of the. Uh... I mean, shout out to whoever sent me the chip, man. I can't. I don't have it pulled to up. To whoever of me. Thank sent you. me the chip, I I can't think too much about it right now. This is not. I think a you, good Dave. time for deep thoughts. Yeah, I was gonna Dave. say I was Dave. I think. Oh, thank you, Dave. Bro. What a bro. Are you Ooh. are you gonna be able to cast? Do we need Josh to sub in and take over the reins? I think I think we're ready to break some bulk. Breaking bulk time. Breaking bulk time. Break break break. Oh yeah, breaking bulk. There's so much good stuff. It's a pick. Breaking bulk. The end. Dave actually, I think was the he has the dubious honor of being the first person I ever blocked on Twitter. So congrats, Dave. <laughs> really? Yeah, he was 
He was uh, give me some spicy shit talk, and then like we hugged it out later. He's All a good right. dude. I'm having some milk. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, do you need man. some milk, Corbin? Oh. Some ice cream. Do you need a nice beverage to wash down your potato chip? I actually messed up. I have this in just like a, a, a cardboard bowl. I should or like you know that came from the place. I should. Oh just yeah, cardboard bowl. bowl. Just like we have at my house. <laughs> no, my. <laughs> it's just in the cardboard container or whatever that the the custard place gave it to me from. I should put it in a bowl so I could clink my spoon around. So you went well, to a custard place specifically to get ice cream for this one chip challenge well custard but yeah yeah that's legit what? i mean all row now i have custard <laughs> i just we're gonna it's like a win-win corbin keep eating cust keep spooning custard in your mouth but i want you to start the episode oh okay great let's uh let's, let's i don't hear any custard bowl. I what here? Uh, I'm clinking my spoon it's... i don't hear any custard i, I want don't... a mouthful of custard and i want you to say let's do some breaking ball all right, pour up. <laughs> <coughs> All right, everybody. <laughs> Let's do some breaking bulk. Woo! All right, who wants to go first? This is rotation edition, by the way, everybody. We are uh, oh, we are getting ready for rotation here. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna we're gonna hit you with uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about Guilds of Ravnica later in the episode. Uh, we've seen some amount of it. You'll have seen more of it by the time this episode comes out. Man, that chip is still hot now that I'm talking. Ugh. Uh, uh, but, but but anyways, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk rotation for breaking bulk and pick of the week here. We're gonna talk guilds of Ravnica a little later. Uh, kind of tie a, a bow on the end of this standard season. Get ready for the next one. Uh, heading into Worlds next week, where you will see people play. Uh, Dominaria draft for Worlds, but also the team series is going to be doing team sealed with Guilds of Ravnica. So you're going to see the entire, uh, I believe everything will be up by then. And uh, obviously you'll be seeing people play with some of the cards. So it'll be kind of cool. All right. So who wants to go first breaking bulk here? This is going to be really easy because they're yeah. all from recent sets. It's yeah. Gonna be like, so you guys well, yeah. all know all these cards. It's you're not much of a guessing game. Yeah, this is, that's, this that's is like true. okay, and, and and this is almost a cheat because like I probably shouldn't get these in bulk. Like okay. this is a, okay. Well, here, tell me, guys, tell me what you guys think because I get these. I just tell people I'll take any bulk rare in your binder at a dime, and like people are cool with that. Um, I have people. I don't tell them what's a dime. I let them pull out what they don't care about. Everyone seems pretty happy with that arrangement. Um, I get this black aether revolt. Rare creature. Yeah, honey. See? See? That's fine. Um, the Henny's sweet, by the way. Do yeah, our Henny listeners, do, do listeners, ask yourself, what, what do you think your Henny's worth? Do you think it's worth 25 to 75 cents? Do you think it's worth 1 to 2 bucks or 3 to 5? Like, most people don't know. This is, you know, it's approaching $3. Uh, it's it's a good card. It's a, it's a vampire, so that's cool. Being a vampire is good. Um, it's got some relevant abilities. It's a sack outlet, but it also makes it pretty strong. So, like, vampire decks are a thing, and this, I don't know, just does work. People give this to me in bulk. It's not bulk. Okay. I've got um, one for you guys. Same set. Aether Revolt, Black Uncommon. Again, should be easy. Gifted Aetherborn. Yeah, so the crazy thing about Gifted Aetherborn is that... It's actually pronounced Aetherborn. That's the crazy thing. Uh, no, it's Aether. Bro, it's you, technically Ether, the A and the E together like that. No, no, it's not, man. Like they specifically said on Kaladesh, it is Ether. I can they guys, that. guys, this this can we just have this conversation continuously for the next thirty minutes? I think this is great radio. Yeah, this is good stuff, man. It is good stuff. It's it's important. everyone needs to know when they're wrong. <laughs> anyway, Corbin's wrong. It's Ether. I agree. All right, so so gifted Etherborn is sweet because the crazy part is it actually was you know, 40 cents back when it came out, it's only gone up since then, despite falling out of standard. There was a time where this was a four of in blue, black, mid range checks in standard because of how good it was against the red decks, etc. Death, touch, life, linking two, three for two. Um, but then it fell out of standard. It hasn't been played. And yet it's still worth more money than basically outside of its original spike it's ever been worth. And I think the reason is just that this is a Vampire Nighthawk that doesn't have 35 printings. Didn't we call it Vampire Night Walk? Because it doesn't fly. <laughs> sure. Uh, but yeah, just 2-3 Death Touch lifelink is pretty good all around. And 
I mean, I don't know if there's a much people out there playing Aetherborn decks. There is an Aetherborn Lord, um, or whether it's just vampires in Commander or what, uh, or if it's just a vampire Nighthawk effect. I but mean, it is, it's, it's worth $2, and it's not going anywhere. It's a so casual card. for whatever card. reason, the most popular deck this week on EDH Rec is um, the Lord Edgar Markov. I don't know why, but more people build Edgar Markov decks than Lord Windgrace. And if you look at the new cards in the deck, it's nothing all that exciting. So, like, the new cards are, like, Luxury Suite, Blood Tracker, Cleansing Nova, Vampire Neonate, and Regal Bloodlord. So, like... Vampire Neonate and Regal Bloodlord, by the way, are just monsters and two at a giant. And that's the last M19 I ever want to play in my whole life. Um, but uh, there's nothing really... There's only one card from Commander 2018 and the new cards. That's Blood Tracker. So everything else, I don't know what's going on. Uh, it could just be we found a pocket of decks that just like all got sent to us at once. But um, that's real weird. So I think vampires are pretty popular. Um, Edgar Markov gets built a lot. He's bannable and competitive, so um, I, I think any, even though it's just like a, a random dork, it's in 40% of the decks. So, Josh, how do you feel about cards like this in Commander, where they're just sort of... I mean, they're fine, right? But the power level is not the typical power level we see in Commander, but... I mean, I guess they can do work. I mean, are you, are you a fan of including cards like this in your deck? No. This is not I, I didn't something I would ever be. put into one of my decks. <laughs> That's um, what I thought. But, but you understand why Edgar people... specifically, because like you just you get value just by playing any vampire. Yeah, and Edgar maybe is like an exception, but in well, so Edgar does to the card what you would want the card to do on its own, which is give some kind of additional value, do something else, because just to. Do those stats just are not good enough. I, <laughs> yeah. The th one other thing you might be able to say for it is like Devotion to Black or something. That's so what I was going to say. If you cared I'm about sure. that, that's the only other thing I could think yeah, of. Yeah, like um, I play Nighthawk in my Gonti deck, and it's probably yeah. one of the lower impact cards in the deck. But Death Touch, Flying Life, like is fun. Like they're all relevant abilities, just even when on defense. And then I have more Devotion to Black cards in Gonti than I think most people do. Like a lot of decks play Grey Merchant and Nick, though, sure. But I have Abhorrent Overlord, too. I've got a couple. Um, uh, what's the other one? Well, yeah. it's interesting. Cards yeah, like this, I think, scale with. They, they're very good up to a certain point. If you're in a more casual play group, just having a death touch monster on the ground is, is actually just can do a lot of a lot of work. People won't attack you, et cetera, right? But I mean, it's a, yeah. it's a kind Again. of card when you get into a, once you hit just like a slightly higher power level, man, the card just does nothing. Yeah. You know, so the it, devotion thing may be the reason when you think about it, like what are your black, black, black two drops that fill that slot on the sort of devotion curve? Um, it's like you don't have a mage. hex mage. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying like you want more than one if you're going for devotion, and you don't have right. a lot of choices. And so that may be we may have hit on it a little bit right there as but a like, reason that most of the decks it's in are at least two colors. A lot of them three. I don't know how good devotion is in a three color deck. Well, yeah. everyone still plays Gary, I think, even in Edgar, right? So mm, no, it's a zombie. No. It's not a vampire, dude. Hmm. Well, okay. I don't yeah, Gary. <laughs> I mean, Gary's decent on its own, honestly. But that's you, what I'm you, saying. Like, even if it's just your devotion is only four, Gary's pretty good, right? Because uh, you're going to recur it like five times. But yeah, I I don't know. I, I'm at a loss for why this card would be in any kind of demand. Really, it seems either born tribal man. I'm telling you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's good in Edgar. I, I'm sure it's fine in Edgar. But I mean, that's just because any vampire will do. Sort of a deal. As right. much yeah, exactly. as anything else. Yeah. Because if you look at the other decks, it's in like 1,700 decks on ADH Rec, and over a third of those are Edgar decks. I mean, it's the also... Other ones, the other ones are other vampire decks. It, also. It's also just true that Vampire Nighthawk was worth $2 for a very long time before Commander was even a thing um, that people yeah. were playing in mass. So, like, me, people just really like the ability. And the only reason Vampire Nighthawk's not worth anything now is because, it's I don't know, if it has actual there, yeah. 20 printings or something, yeah. But flying is pretty significant yeah yeah i mean obviously it's good but i mean it just could be the same sort of players that exist we're spending somewhere. a lot of time on this breaking bulk pick <laughs> yeah man dj jump on in here bro why are you stalling are you <laughs> hour of devastation on common land hour of devastation oh is it a it's a desert which one uh basically all of them 
<laughs> Good one, Ryan Bouchard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, if near Deadlands is still the most expensive, technically, just because it probably sees some standard play and it's also just like a a removal spell on a land, which is traditionally a really good card if you can like recur it with life from or something like that. Uh, Shafat Dunes is a second place. I've seen this card see a little bit of modern play, uh, but not a ton. It's just and then Heshepa Oasis, uh, Realm and Up Ruins is obviously banned in standard, and then the mill one is probably more of a casual card, but even then it doesn't really see much play because well, it's the, a pain the land. Mill one, the mill one I might think... just be the best one in standard. Yeah. I think the mill one's actually pretty good in EDH too because Moldrotha and things like that. I think uh, it's yeah. good. Um, I think a lot it's of like really good. more casual players will still stray away from it because it is just a pain land, yeah. first and foremost to them. It is very good. Uh, but just all these are p picks that you can take out of bulk um, and buy list out. They're just very strong utility lands. They do tap for colorless. So you don't have to just mana confluence it and just pay life every single turn with it. Um, they're just incremental value. Like, unless you're running something that specifically cares about the basic lands you play, I wouldn't play Deadlands and Gonti because I am just obsessed with basic swamps for Urborg and Cabal Coffers and stuff like that. Um... But a lot of these are just like if you have a basic land to swap out, they're just going to be better in that slot. Sort of like running a uh, the champions of Kamigawa cycle. Like a lot of the time, you can just hit be like, oh, I can run Manamo over an island or Okina over a uh, forest or whatever. Like they're just traditionally better than basic lands in some spots. And when you go through your hour of devastation bulk, even if the abrades are gone, uh, even if there's no like claim to fames or anything like Supreme Wills or anything like that, you just pull these out, especially with the rotation. All right, so let's talk about... Uh... Now, did anybody see that Fall of the Thran deck that uh, got a little bit of hype over the weekend? Was that a standard yeah, deck? that was using... Um, what's the card that exiles your opponent's graveyard? You sacrifice it? It's the... Uh, the... The, the Saga? Well, in the, what Fall format? of the Thran is a saga. That's the one that what, blows up. No, I thought you were talking about the Black Saga, though. The What format are we talking about? Standard. Silent There's Gravestone? A... No, it's, isn't, a, isn't it's a creature. A Phyrexian that? Scriptures is the other Black Saga that exiles somebody's great. No, that's whatever. definitely not. No, there's a creature. It's like a two-drop creature that you can sacrifice it to. Remorseful so, Cleric. Sure. Remorseful Cleric, yeah. So there were, <laughs> yeah. They were exile. It destroys all lands, right? The saga does, right, and then does. each yeah. turn, everybody gets two lands back. But then, uh -huh. if if you then exile your opponent's graveyard, they're not getting any lands back. Huh. So you yeah. have four lands, and they have zero. Someone yeah. did that to me. I had that card play against me for the first time in Commander last week. First land I returned was the Bajuga Bog. But was is is there a, an un uncommon desert that nukes your graveyard, or is like the only scavenging? Like, yeah, they're scavenger grounds. Yeah, somebody that's rare. Somebody yeah. followed the Thran to me in Commander, and I Boros termed it. <laughs> I don't like the Garden Commander. <laughs> so many people are just going to put Juka Bog you immediately on the first, the first up, the first chapter or second chapter, I guess. All right, so let's talk about. There's a lot of cards rotating out. Some of them have been very good in standard. Some of them have seen modern play. What cards do you guys think once they rotate here that people have talked about are just not? They're just never going to come back. It's just not worth holding on to them. Get rid of them now because they're not going to be worth anything. Most of them, right? Well, the answer, of course, is most of them. But, you know, I think there's there's probably some that people talk about, you know, that, that maybe, let's say, let's take Scavenger Grounds, for instance, right? I could build a case that Scavenger Grounds should be worth money long term. Um, you know, it's a, it's a rare from a second set that I don't know if it was super popular or not. I don't think it was crazy popular. It's good in Commander, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, something like that, do you think... It's just not worth holding on to. I think uh, that's... Torrential Gear Hulk. Okay. Torrential yeah. Gear Hulk is A anything that's really, 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 really Verterous Gear Hulk. Standard. Verterous yeah. Gear Hulk. Aether Sphere Harvester. Mm -hmm. I mean, that card's been a bulk rare for. You've been minute. a bulk rare. <laughs> okay. I think I think Gear Hulk's a great one actually, DJ, because it is a card that people flirt with playing in modern, and you can make an argument for a lot of ways in which it's very good. But I think you're right. It's five dollars now. And I just don't know that it will ever come back because of how expensive it is. What else like that is there? I mean, is there anything? What about let's say Torment of Hellfire? You guys... that card is my number one pick for rotating cards that will be twice as much as it is now in a year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's very, very, very good. Yeah. But it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna drop first, right? No, well, uh, it, it might I kind of don't no, think like it will. It's... 
Its current price isn't really predicated on standard to begin with. It's the fact that it's in like 5,000 EDH decks. So. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, card, par- that's not a card that standard players liquidate when moving all of their standard cards for the most part. Um, that's a card I feel like that's already been picked out of a lot of standard players' binders over the course of the past year uh, by either vendors or other trade partners or <laughs> just anything like that. I think that card is... It's not a card that gets liquidated at rotation, right? Like, Hazarets, uh, over the course of the past two months, people have just been shipping their Hazarets to me in binders and stuff like that. Just be like, oh, I'm not going to be needing this in two months. Torment the Hellfire is not really in the same category of card, I don't think. Right. I would also also point out that, uh, I mean, to wait, it is not, it is worth more now than it ha- ever has been. It's only gone up through its lifetime in standard. Uh, it's doubled since a year ago, as a matter of yeah. fact. The foils, was, this by the is a way, card people, we talked about a year ago. The yeah. foils only two x the non yeah, foils. Foils like, ten bucks. I like the foils a lot there. And that's that's going to diverge, like as the as the um, the non foil grows to like one point five times to two times what it is now, the 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 foil will be able four to five times what it is now. I think that's a good place to sock money because those prices are going to diverge the more it becomes an EDH, and eventually it's going to get reprinted yeah. somewhere. In in non foil. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, all right. What about the gods? Where do you guys fall on the gods? I'm not sure. I like any of them. Uh, scare oh. like which which set? Well, oh, are you uh, saying scarab? Or are you saying the? Well, either set. Number? I mean, what do you think about like scarab gods? Obviously, the most expensive one right now. It's sixteen dollars. I- Locust god is still six fifty despite seeing no play. I mean, it's do you EDH. like? It's a hundred percent EDH. Ronus, it was a very popular deck. Ronus is a good hold. Yeah, I yeah, agree. Ronus, Ronus is a real good hold. But you like you like Locust God too, Jason. I just it's 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 was one hundred percent predicated on EDH. The problem is, I think a lot of those Locust God people might switch over to Niv Mizzet because I think that's a little more. I don't know. I, Locust God is just so boring, and maybe the Niv Mizzet yeah. deck will be a little more exciting because you're doming them. I, I'm I willing think, to go on record. I don't against... think they will because they could already do that. Like Firemind's yeah. not that yeah. different than that. Like if they wanted to run a Niv Mizzet that does that, they can do it. So I'm I gonna think, go on record and say that I think Locust God is going to not go anywhere. Because, I think it's. I don't think it's yeah. a dip, but it's it's a solid card. It just stays at six forever. Maybe it's not I, like a uh, double up, but it's. Yeah, I, w- I, I wouldn't buy it expecting to get fifteen bucks for. Locust I wouldn't God. even buy it expecting to get ten. I don't think it's yeah, going anywhere. That, I just think it's a solid just six for. And that's kind of why I want to talk about the, some of these cards, right? It's because they're not going to go. You know, like do we think? You know, Locust God is is one of the best examples because it, it's not a standard play type thing. It hasn't ever been seen in modern, anything like that. Um, but it, it does seem to me like a lot of other blue-red commanders, and it, it just it feels like a card that it, it doesn't do anything fun. I, maybe I, maybe you guys have can you, tell me if I'm you, wrong. Have you, you wheeled with this? Have you, yeah, but that's like, you just did it, you know? it's It does the same thing every time. You play it, then you wheel, and you make th- things and kill people. It seems... And then you skull clamp. All your tokens, right? Like so, it's just like every other commander. It's every. Deck. It's. I think Perforos decks are pretty boring in EDH because they're pre- they're pretty linear, and this is a, a pretty good Perforos deck. What about Scarab God? Because that is sort of predicated a little bit on standard, and that's think, a card that just kind of like I feel like I'm recommending it more and more for I decks. I think this card goes uh, from t- like the 16 it's at now to like. 12 maybe but then oh, it just keeps climbing and it goes to like 20 and I yeah. even if people replace this with like the new zombie go- or commander to have access to white the scarab god still goes in the 99 so even if people take apart their scarab god decks or like you stop having scarab god be the commander i think it goes in the 99 yeah, it goes into the verena deck it i mean 100 percent goes into the verena deck. so like so the number of copies don't really go down because like the same, nobody is taking it out and selling it they're just putting well, it where, in the where do you think it's going to fall then it's the 20. so the sit it's sit well okay it's 16 dollars right now the market price is 13 how low do you think it's going to go 12 metric the you think the the median will hit 12 i think the market will hit like 11 or tw- like 11 or 12 wow. the market okay and then i, I, I think this, I think this card's going to dip below 10 but it's i think you're underestimating zombies specifically Okay. Zombies in it's general like and a- commander like are always expensive. Like zombies is just one of the most played tribes in the entire. It's the most popular tribe. But we're, yeah. we're thinking at commander. There are a bunch of standard players that just have these, and then yeah. they're gonna. Uh, I think half of the scarab gods 
are in 60 card decks and half of them are in 100 card decks and i i think unlike the locust god where like 99 percent are in 100 card decks i think a bunch of scarab gods are going to hit the market all at once they will, and I think that those those EDH players who have been waiting all this time for the card to drop will very quickly scoop those up at that price. Are there that many of those I don't think EDH that, players, though? I don't I don't they're not that so. savvy, dude, I'm telling so. you. No one's waiting for it to I fall I just don't know months. that many EDH players that are like poised on the edge to like jump in at the exact right moment. They're more like, oh, this this deck, that, that seems fun. Let's look up the cards and buy those. Yeah, they have no idea. They bought Scarab God at 25 <laughs> or, yeah. I think the thing that makes Scarab God, though I agree, DJ, have a high top end is that it actually doesn't just go in zombie decks, right? Any deck that's sort of <laughs> self milling itself yeah. it is going to want a card like Scarab God, and it's just so good at what it does. It does it's great in zombie decks, of course, but if you don't have zombies, there's plenty of decks that are still going to use it, that card. Yeah, it makes its own army. And yeah, yeah it's also just to every... completely. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say every mechanic in the new set is graveyard based just about, yes. right? Like It works good with surveil. Surveil, uh there's the um the Golgari one, the um overgrowth Undergrowth. and then Yeah, and then uh jumpstart. Yep. Cuz yeah, yeah, it's, it's also all just all like jumpstart you're getting a set even if you like dredge those spells, you can still replay them plus you're putting more stuff in the yard. So, I I think all that stuff is in mo- there's surveil, uh jumpstart in in mono blue and there's um the undergrowth in mono black so i don't know man i i, I kind of think that that only gives you more options for building around scarab god well plus scarab god is just a card that is like it's just incidental graveyard hate it can win the game on its own it's just a powerful card no matter how you're using it so yeah, but, it's it's hard to get keep getting rid of it yeah so like yeah i mean i think it's going to go below 10 but I don't blame you guys for. If for it goes it's below ten, higher. I will go in very aggressively on this card. Wow! All right, DJ. DJ's on record then. If well, it just... Locust God goes below four, do you feel the same way about it? No. I don't think the top end of Locust God is that high, right? It's not going to hit twenty. It doesn't go in a right. ton of different decks. It's yeah, it might it's, hit it's, eight. Well, it's got the same number of decks built around it as um as Scarab God, but, but if it's you look at it as decks. an inclusion, yeah. it's it's in. Yeah, that's Scarab what I'm god saying. Is... Like, if you build a Sultai deck, Scarab God can go in it. If you build, you know, right. one of the other color combinations that it can't be the lead singer, it can. It's still probably going in the deck, right? If you're self milling at all or doing any sort of dredge stuff, then you probably want that card if you're in those colors. Yeah, and Locust God doesn't work that way at all. Well, it's funny. Based on EDA track data, the Locust God's in twice as many decks as it is the Commander, and the Scarab God is in about 1.6 times. That's very interesting. Like I said, I mean, because it's been $20. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. But it's not, it's not going to go down much from where it is now. So, well, and in general, to bite the bullet or, or something new and shiny is going to come along and take everyone's attention. Right. In general, I like cards that are always going to be good and part of the 99 because Commander these days, people change decks more than they ever used to. I watch people take apart decks all the time yes. to build a new commander. Um, like I've watched people pull up, somebody built Zakama, pulled it right apart to build Lord One Grace. Somebody else had Oloro, pulled it apart to build Aminatu. You know, that, that sort of stuff happens more now than it did in the early days of commander. So if something is only good as a commander, I don't really like it long term as much as I like something that's just part of the 99. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, speaking of both of those points, Jason brought up a card that I hadn't really had on my radar up until this point, but I really do like it, um, just going forward long term, is Neheb. Yeah, and I played Oh, that was my pick of the week, but that's cool. That was crazy. The mono black one? Or, sorry, mono red one? The mono red one. Yeah. That card is so good. I, that thing made so much mana against me And nothing in red does what it does. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Exactly, Josh. That's, that was going to be my whole point when this was going to be my pick of the week, and I'm going to pick something else later. Uh, (laughs) sorry. But, like... But it, yeah, what else? What else in red does this? Mono red kind of gets a a bad rap for sucking, but like most of the mono red decks that I see that are people are excited about are Neheb. God, do you know Verdur's gear using... DJ, you brought it up earlier. It's a dollar. I know. That's crazy. Yeah, I find them in dollar bins. And I'm like, oh my god. And then I'm like, oh, that's about right. That's crazy. Actually. And uh, it puts counters on stuff. Like counters are real good in EDH. So like I think if it if this hits like a buck, then that's probably going to be three in a year. 
people yeah. will be surprised, but I don't, I don't, I'm not buying. All right. So while, while we're on the topic, I mean, this kind of turned into we're just picking cards we like, too. How about well, Razaketh? I mean, Razaketh's already like really expensive. Fine. It's fine. And it's it Josh's probably, fault. <laughs> yeah. It probably cra- uh, caps out at 10, I think. It's not like a card you buy for profit, but it's one of those that like you buy now if you need it. It's like almost a breaking bulk because, yeah, people like aren't going to think it's bulk, but it's also $7.50. Like, it's just crazy. Well, it's a mythic from a from Hour of Devastation where... Yeah. Hour of Devastation it's, it's might just the be... the fourth most expensive card in that set. And it's Hour the of Devastation first might most... just have... It's also the first worst flavor text in the set. Jason, it's the second most expensive card in the set. It's worth more than Nickel Bullets right now. It's Word? it's extraordinarily good. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like, broken level. It's sort of... I mean, it's Paradox Engine good. That was my preview card last year. I had to... <laughs> I had to recover. Recovering from Vegas, I had to write my preview article about this card in the airport on my laptop. Nice. Before there I are cards home. in the format that, like, you're like, they should ban this card, and then a little bit later, you realize they don't need to ban this card because everybody realizes after they play it that card is no fun. Yes. <laughs> and Razaketh and Paradox Engine both fit that bill, where it's Razaketh, like, yeah, you win yeah. with, you win with it a couple times, and then you go. Yeah, I guess I could win with that every time, but that's not very fun. And then you kind of either take it out, or sometimes you just choose not to cast it when it's in your hand. Kind of. Well, thing. that's that's a nice. I'm thing starting about... to feel that way about every Simic deck. Every Simic deck I build, I'm like, this, I tattoo over looks awesome. And then I build it, I'm like, Ugh. all blue green decks. And I didn't win. All blue green decks are just the same to me. I was gonna say I feel the same about Torment of Hailfire sometimes, where yeah, my Gonti deck is designed to be like the deck that plays their deck, but sixty percent of my wins are like big mana get you Torment to hailfire for 35 yeah, yeah it's just dead to the deathless right it's, it's, it. it's just sanguine blood or what's the wait exsanguinate Ex-sanguinate. 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 and dead to the deathless yeah. like yeah. yeah there's this arc that edh players go through where they like start out they don't know much they see some decks go off that looks like fun then they google most powerful decks in edh and they're like sweet i'm gonna do that they do that twice and they're like okay wasn't actually that much fun and then they kind of come down on their power level and so the Razaketh Paradox Engine stuff is all up there on the when I'm trying to yeah. make my most powerful deck stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's actually really interesting. Or they really don't, or they go the other way and they become super hardcore competitive people and then they... But then they, have, then, they go play their, then they go play competitive pods and leave you alone and it's even better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's totally fine. I mean, those people find their people sometimes. and But I'd say like, and that's a certain percentage, but a, a, a higher percentage sort of realize like, uh, you know, I could do that. It's not super fun. I'm going to just bring my power level down a little bit and I'm going to enjoy... The company of the people I'm playing a little bit more, and neither neither's right or wrong. It's just like I think percentage wise, a lot more people fall into that second category. Yeah, that's what I my think- my my play group's been playing a lot recently over the past month or so, and we've had people start pulling out, um, you know, Nexus of Fate or just like some of the or Expropriate or just some of these just fundamentally broken yeah. cards that are just like really stupid, and we've all powered down our decks to an extent. Um, and it just makes games better. But then Yeah, we know the, how broken Nexus of Fate is in EDH. What? It's not that it's broken, man. It's, it's just like when you're this is the thing. It's when your deck is ten different cards like that. It's not just it's not expropriate. I mean it's kind of just expropriate, but expropriate like, is a it, different it's category. It's not it's not just like say Amanatu's Argery and Nexus of Fate and Expropriate and you know, this and that and that. But it's when your deck is ten of those cards that will just win the game out of nowhere. It just self-corrects where everyone knows your deck is broken once you get to the late game because any doesn't matter what you've done to them at that point they can just draw one broken card and get out of it by chaining together busted cards so you just end up having to kill them first and that's not a fun experience for anybody and that's why they people take those cards out of their decks it just self-corrects very well it's it's great um but then you know there's always somebody who shows up new and they've got their paradox engine deck and then you know then you just have to show them why you don't play those cards I, my I wonder crowning... if that. I'm sorry, DJ. I wonder if that puts kind of a weird cap on, you know, the price that something like Razaketh Paradox Engine can get, right? Because if you look at Paradox Engine and how good it is in EDH, it should be what is it right now? Like sixteen bucks or so. It's yeah. It's like thirteen to fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe that's about right. Um, yeah, but I wonder if that means that like the card won't proliferate to the same amount that like i don't know another card that's of like 
a medium power level, but is is more fun. Would right. get to. Like I, think, I don't know. I don't know about that because well, expropriate keeps going up. That's like, true, but there was barely any of those. Expropriate is in a very very different set than paradox. There's not a lot of well, to be fair, there's not. Yes, you're right, but there's also not a lot of paradox engines. It's a mythic from Ether Revolt. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe that theory is just bad. Well, people, I'm just throwing it out there. Were to, nobody wanted to invest. Nobody wanted to buy deep on Paradox Engine. Everyone was asking me, "Is like, should I buy deep?" And I was like, "I don't know," because like it's everyone's talking about how bannable yeah. it is. And I, I didn't personally think it would be banned, but I also didn't spend any of my own money buying seven dollar Paradox Engines. So I didn't think it would get banned, but I didn't think it would not get banned enough to like wager my own money well so. i think it's just there's so many options in commander these days and every year we get new commander sets we get a new multiplayer yeah. focused set their players just have so many options now that i think any particular win condition maybe has a difficult time popping off forever right or crazy amounts um i mean it's maybe, actually the maybe. less popular is the the less powerful utility cards that right. have a wider appeal Right. They get there. It's not the really like say yeah. So yeah. compare like Oracle of Moldiah or something, right? Um, to Laboratory Maniac, right? Exactly. Or yeah, yeah. That's a great comparison. I mean, Oracle's worth thirty five dollars and going up. Um, you know, something like Mana Reflection going up in price. Something like Aura Shard just is going to continually go up because it's not the cards that when they play them, people don't choose to stop playing Magic with them. Well, I don't know. This is, it's actually a fascinating no, theory. <laughs> I don't know what it means for the price of those cards necessarily, but I think you, I think you probably are right about that, Josh. That it, like, it, it does affect what people play. It might create a bit of an artificial price cap too. It, it might, it, it might attenuate its growth a little bit more, whereas something that's more ubiquitous is a little bit boundless. Like, I mean, I'm I, just I thinking. Never, like, I don't. I only own two Paradox Engines, but I have 10, eight, 10 Aura Shards. So. That's exactly what I was going to say. Like, yeah. Paradox Engine, I have two, and I'm why will I ever go buy more? But right. Oracle and Moldiah, like, I'm like, I want one of those in every single deck that has green, so I might need 30 of them. And Josh only has two because I came on Command Zone and told people to double their orders, and he was only going to get one. <laughs> and they're foil, baby. Well, you were the one buying foil anointed processions for, like, four bucks. That was pretty smart. Oh, yeah, I have a lot of those. Yeah, cards. Cards great. It's Jason, so you should have bought that, that Russian foil in our case. <laughs> uh, I'm happy with my nine dollar non foil or non non Russian. Right. You're right. Well, I should have bought. I should have bought it. You're right. Oh, this is this is one of the happy? deepest dives we've had into Commander Finance in a while. So I'm, like that's because Josh is here to back me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all play EDH. No, cause that's not true. Oh. Corbin doesn't play EDH. Well, I play Commander like three times a week. Yeah, but you don't play EDH. I've played Commander with Corbin before. Oh, oh. I don't, okay. Yeah. I don't know what that means. So. Nice elitist here. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Jesus. Hey, man, it's, it, EDH rec fires me if I say Commander. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair. Commander I just remember. I just remember in Vegas, Don grabbing me by the scruff of my neck and pointing me at my laptop. It's like, what's that say? Does it say Commander rec? No, it says EDH. <laughs> That's what I thought. DJ, you are not old enough to be this much of an elitist about it, man. <laughs> I That's not what I was saying. I was just making a joke that you play like a zombie and shit. Oh, no, bro. I've been playing the heck out of Nicol Bolas. I think yeah, the only game I I've ever... I play EDH. Nicol Bolas is an Elder Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I play old school Nicol Bolas with Fire Whip. <laughs> no, nah, New Bolas has been a lot of fun. It, it specifically changes the way the game what the game is about when you strip people's hands. If everyone just gets to do whatever they want, the game is always about the best cards in people's deck. If you just destroy everyone's hand by like turn six or seven, it suddenly becomes about what small thing that has either survived or got in or they top deck. And it or just makes the, the game- the best top decker, yeah. yeah. Well, but it's not even necessarily, like sometimes people have stuff in play obviously too, and it's, but the game doesn't become about who's gonna torment a Hellfire us for 20. It becomes about who's going to, you know, who managed to get enough small creatures down to pressure the planeswalkers, or who has one planeswalker that's protected? Like it just makes every game be a, about different things rather than progressing to the same endpoint every time. It's just sweet. It's just fun, and I get to play a bunch of nickel boluses, and I keep a bolus count. So every time a new nickel bolus hits the field, I tick it up. A plus trolling. I keep a I keep a, a plus trolling count. was asking. 
DJ and me if we had a foil Nico Bullis and I said yes and you're like, eh, have us buy one in the shop. <laughs> that was A plus trolling. <laughs> I, I have a mana crypt. Uh, I have a mana crypt count myself. A mana crypt count? He writes. He writes on the card in pen. What? I have a promo mana crypt, for, like the book promo mana crypt, and I have a sharpie tally, like a, like wins losses, and then every time I win a coin flip, I mark it with a sharpie. And... What's wrong with you? It's in his Gaunty deck where everything's. I know, game. I know, but it wait, sounds stupid. How many no, marks are on the card? You got to write really small, right? Yeah, I've got, got like small hands. Forty or yeah, 50. he does I've have got small like, hands. Probably like. 40 or 50 marks in the card so far. I mean, when I finish the front side of the card, I'm just going to flip it over and start again. Okay. Um, And then on, when I finish... On the back? Yeah. It's not sleeved. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that? I play unsleeved alpha lands in that deck, and those are all, like, round corners. What's wrong with you? You're a monster. No, what's wrong with me? I had a book promo... Uh, Crypt that I got for twenty bucks and I sold it for forty. <laughs> nice. Leave the same one hundred and ten percent for the next guy. I just don't even play Mana Crypt because I, I wanted to ethics. get banned because that's a magic card and you don't play magic. We I have it. ethics because I have ethics. I play Mana Vault. That feels like cheating, also. Like Man, you, you can't tell me Mana Crypt's broken and I'm just like vaulting on turn one. I mean, Crypt's more broken than Vault. Yes, by a lot. Vault's only way, good right? if you have, like, artifact shenanigans, I think. Yeah. It's only good. It's, okay. it's fine. I mean, I think, this, my I think this a competitive players would disagree just because they're just trying to win when they yeah, use the yeah, yeah, the first yeah. time. Like, competitive yeah. players would disagree because they only think 30 magic cards are good. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Jason, careful, man. You know what happened last time. Oh, what are they going to do? Jason... What are they going to do? They're going to turn three you, dude, and you're going to cry. Wait, what happened last time? We, oh. <laughs> we, had well, a really want to hear. we had a patron guest, a Patreon guest on, who really was into competitive EDH. And we had a good conversation about it. It was fine. It was great. Except Jason shit all over competitive EDH as being a terrible thing, or not a real format, blah, 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 no, blah. No, no, no. The people who play it are subhuman garbage. That's <laughs> it. Yep, there you go. Yeah, I'm sorry. The I, format's I didn't, fine. It's just everyone that plays I didn't, it. I didn't make it mean enough. So all, wow. like, 14 of them sent us angry emails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like, we are the patrons of the lab maniacs. They, they, it we was, will not be ignored. Someone the never like, nudes. There's dozens of us. <laughs> dozens yeah, of somebody us. crafted a response on their behalf. Sent it, it. You know, it was very professional. It was nice of them. I, we write it on the podcast, right? Like, I have nothing against them. Jason does, <laughs> but well, yes, Jason angered that entire community of dozens. We lost. We alienated so many potential listeners that day. We. I like how you say we. Yeah, the royal we. <laughs> the we get asked all the time, constantly, by competitive EDH players to like talk about it more, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, listen, that's like asking me to talk about legacy or something. Like, I yeah. get it, you like it, I'm glad. I can't talk about it because I don't play it. Like, I can allude to it sometimes, but what do you want me to do? You're, what's going to happen if I do talk about it? Now you're going to be yelling at me. You so, didn't talk about it right. You didn't do it right. I mean, I don't, I don't get into the what Jason gets into because I don't like getting into arguments that are basically like favorite ice cream flavor. But chocolate, I, yeah, but but oh, I like, don't get into arguments. I start them and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> That's I like true. The, like competitive EDH players out there. You know, dozens of you or whatever. You should make your own content because you guys know about it, but we just don't. So, you know, I, I honestly I mean, didn't think anyone played like it. It's sort of like brawl, but played by fewer people. It's it's. it's I just thought it was like, not a thing. Like, like, I don't know if it could be played by fewer people than Brawl. Hey, I play Brawl. If, if Gavin's listening, Gavin, come on this podcast. We love you. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> He's not listening, but we'd like to have Gavin. You know, on this we've podcast. had we. I'd Every like to think that we have legitimately pulled a fast one over on Wizards with the number of, of uh, with with the with the interviews they've let us done do do with with staff members. 
What well, we had Aaron Forsyth. You guys had Forsyth. Who could yeah, forget the uh, Yeah, That's I was gonna like say, like who that, could right? forget the Helene interview where it's like a Skype interview in like oh, Moscow God. or something like that? Where that she couldn't. That she wasn't she, her they, fault. She had to do it at work for legal reasons, and like they couldn't make the tack happen. And you wonder why Magic Online sucks. And <laughs> well, Forsyth they can't get like, Skype to work. No wonder Moto's interface is buggy. Forsyth came on and talked Mr. about Fetchlands, and actually yeah. like. It was a reference point for people for years until they reprinted Fetchlands, like, based off what he said. Like, don't accidentally make us that important. You'll regret it. <laughs> but now they're talking. Now, we, now we're now we trying to get Gavin on. Who knows? Just talk about Brawl a lot. He'll probably come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean. I they really want rotate, Brawl to happen. They do. That's well, true. But it doesn't like, matter. They're wizards. They'll make Brawl happen eventually. They'll wear us down. I don't know. I don't think it's going anywhere. They man. made some pretty intrinsic mistakes, I think, and unless they backtrack on them, I don't. Uh, the rotation what? thing, I think, I, I just don't think that you can overcome it. So, what do you think? Well, how do you make it its own thing? If, uh, if you, my idea was you have um, each commander that in brawl can only be played with cards that were ever legal and standard with it, mm. and so yes, it's a agreed. rotating rotation. But my deck never just fully just goes away. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a much better idea. Really, that's casual really players, complicated. That's confusing. It's, that sounds no, fun, not. but really no, complicated. Not. Why is it complicated? It's not complicated. Actually, Do you, that's an let opportunity me ask you guys for a question. site like EDH Rec to be like, here's all the cards that are legal no, no. with your deck. That, that would be easy, yeah. And let me ask you a question, because this is the argument I've heard from people, which is like, well, how will I know if my opponent's deck is legal or not? Let me ask you guys a question. When you sit down to play EDH with somebody, do you count how many cards are in their deck? No, I do count No, you deck. give them the credit for it. Because yeah, it's a casual format. Oh, yeah, Corbin, Corbin, uh, if you ever play against me, don't cut my deck. You have to riffle shuffle it. <laughs> and we always just cut he, each other's decks out of habits because we're all like... He just got an alpha soul ring to go in that deck, and it, it's not even that bad. He's like, it's HP. I'm like, no, we can be safe. All right, while well, we're on the subject <laughs> of changing rules in Commander and Brawls, Josh, Cyclonic have I ever rifts. told you... Cyclonic well, yeah, 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 yeah. Josh, have I ever told you about the cheat count? The cheat count? Yeah, the cheat counter. Yeah, you want to know about the cheat counter? Cheating. Yeah, I do, because you've never told me about it. All right, this is legitimately, I think, a good thing. Is this a okay. Corbin story? I want you to eat another chip. This is not a Corbin this. story. This is a thing that people, I've never received anything but positive feedback for. All right, so you sit down with your buddies at the kitchen table. You're getting ready to play Game of Commander. Somebody mulligans twice, and they accidentally draw seven. Boom, cheat count one. They go back down to six, right? Yep. Cheat counter is at one. It's in the middle of the table. It's a joint dice on right. a D20. Play a few rounds, whatever. Next person tries to cast a spell but forgets about, say, a Thalia or something in play. They try to cast a spell they can't cast. Boom. Somebody catches it. Cheat count two. So the okay. cheat count, it is not, the cheat count is not for people who make a strategic mistake and want to go back and correct it. It's for people who basically, you know, no one's like cheating in the strict, you know, the technical sense of the word, right? Somebody misses right. something on board, right? You have the cheat count. When the, okay. the cheat count does not reset in between games, it continues. Okay. Whenever the cheat count hits 20, the player who ticks it to 20 loses that game on the spot and it resets. So it causes everybody to start to pay really close attention like once it gets up to like 15 That's or something. That's dumb because one yep. person could be responsible for 19 of those. And the yeah, but person. Jason, it's not, it's not about being fair. It's about having fun. But by the way, it also makes people like... It, it very neatly solves the uh, the issue of, like, no one wants to be a dick to their friends, but at some point you can't, like, at some point what level of take backs are you going to allow, you know? I think if the cheat counter hits 40, you should duct tape a 40 to someone's hand. <laughs> no, the cheat, count, the cheat count is great. Somebody introduced me to it one time at home, and I started implementing it everywhere, and it's great because it it, it causes people to pay attention, which is good. And there's some real stress when he gets up there to 15 or 16. You're on a complicated board, and you just do something wrong, you're gonna get it right. It's a it is it adds a next I level like, of fun. I like the the fact that it helps people pay attention to the game instead of their phone. Exactly. Um, but, I have a personal rule, and that's uh, I mean, it's I think it's a pretty standard rule. I'm not sure if anyone else does it, but it's with Sensei's Divining Top. Uh, when somebody starts using Top, they have a chess you have like a chess clock. And if they go over like a certain time period, uh, you get to rip up their card. 
I just isn't really similar. If someone plays a Sensei Divining Top, you get to rip up their card. I have no problem with Top. You can Top responsibly. If our friend Ben plays a turn one Soul Ring, we make him shuffle up his hand and like, no. <laughs> it's not hard to Top You're responsibly. You're a cheater, Ben. People who can't Top responsibly, like that is the fault of them, not the Top. You know, PSA, we did a entire episode of the Command Zone podcast one time about learning to play faster. <laughs> and we devoted a large portion of that show to Sensei's Divining Top. So if you want to find that episode, just type it into your YouTube search bar. Command Zone, how to play faster. Are you plugging a more popular podcast? <laughs> <laughs> what's what's going to be an enough old episode. for you? It's an old episode. You know? <laughs> Not as many people have heard that, of that one. What's <laughs> going to be enough for you? <laughs> I'm officially sponsored by Wizards. I'm slumming it here with Brainstorm Brewery for <laughs> 11,000 people. <laughs> All right. Have a, you heard that, of the command? That's zone? a good idea. Next time I play with somebody who's just taking slow, it was very slow, and there are plenty of them. I'm just going, I'm not going to tell them. I'm just going to pull it up on my phone. And as soon as they pass the turn, I'm just going to hit play and set it in front of them just to piss them <laughs> off. There you go. Man. We just, just got a, this turned from our rotation episode into our EDH episode. I'm super cool with that. <laughs> you guys want to talk? I, I mean, uh, totally surprised that that happened, guys. I, I wonder yeah. why. Well, oh, should we say by Spire, Bluff, Canal, and Aetherflux Reservoir? Like, I think you guys know what to buy at rotation, right? Like, I think we said Torment of Hellfire. We said Neheb. Like, Neheb was my pick of the week. I'm, that's I, I mean, I've got a pick of the week lined up still, but... Mirage, Mirror, Word of Invention. Like, you guys know what's yeah. what's going to go up in the long term. And, it, like, when it's out of standard, you know what's in modern, and it's the stuff that's already expensive now. So, really, EDH is the only thing that's going to move stuff after rotation. So, yeah, we're going to talk about EDH, I guess. Right. Well, so. I, I was going to ask if you guys want to talk about Guilds of Ravnica. I mean, yeah, I'm, 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 super, I'm super stoked to talk about that. And, like, I like all the mechanics seem... Vaguely graveyardy. Have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's Monday night, and Golgari has the best card in the set. That is well, true. I don't Assassin's think, Trophy. Yeah, card is What's going to come along and beat that? Like this set's going to be completely bonkers. Oh, can I? Um, uh, we need a buy cats moment here, so I'm going to say buy Isochron Scepter. Oh yeah. Did I do it? I actually level I, zero. I actually did a pseudo finance article for Cool Stuff Inc., which I'm not even like. I don't even know if they want me to do that, but I was like, you should, yeah, you should, uh, you should buy Ice Grand Scepter for Assassin's Trophy. And I talked about all the stuff that goes with Convoke and crap like that, but like Scepter, Scepter and Trophy is not going to be great in modern because you don't want to give them those lands, but like in EDH, you're just blowing up something gigantic. It's like, yeah, go get one of your four basics, idiot. Like, I'm super cool with that. I love it. So is it I'm great in Golgari though, because what are your other, like you have to have Assassin's Trophy, right? Like what else are you putting on it? Uh, well, the idea, uh, the like idea it's would, great in, it's great with blue because if you know if you don't have yeah, a dramatic reversal, I, you're like, well, yeah. I would say the idea, like certainly the thing it I'm doing. Anything on a scepter is pretty good. The, the what I'm going to do specifically how for many, mining like, modern is played in a soul tie shell, where worst case scenario you just put a remand underneath it. Yeah. Okay. Like, I mean, I think fair that's enough. the idea. So I, I, just for, I have a Josh, I just think for EDH, clock. there's not a bunch of like. Instants and sorceries in that color combination that you can have as your backup plan if you just don't happen to have assassin's trophy. Yeah, I, guess I don't. You can really, do all the tutors. Yeah, so I, I don't really. I have a question about this card. Normally, the past sets they've said story spotlight, but this just says like or story spotlight like one out of five or one out of three or whatever. This just says story spotlight. I think they've said they're not going to number them anymore. Really? So you have to like piece it together yourself then, or? No, no, yeah. you do what I do. You don't pay attention to that at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a. Yeah, I've seen a Yo. woman naked, so I don't worry about stuff like that anymore. Oh, they're reprinting Electromancer. I just saw that. Anyway, so what else do you guys like from the set so far? They're reprinting Chromatic out? Lantern, too. I like Quasi-Duplicate. Oh. oh, yeah, I mean, the the reprints in this set are bonkers. We got the Lantern, which they knew we needed. I'm so excited uh, we, about Lantern, you guys. I'm going to buy so many of these. We got Oh, yeah, at three bucks or whatever? Yeah, it's we got insane. the Shocks. It's like what the Gilded shocks. Lotus reprint wanted to be. Well, Gilded Lotus will probably never recover. There's no way Chromatic Lantern doesn't recover. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And you're just going to get these from competitive players all day. You'll trade them some $3 rare. That's going to be a bucket rotation. You get a $3 yep. Lantern, that'll be 7 at rotation. Well, we maybe. actually have hit the point where we, we actually were sold out of Lanterns at the store. You know, like, I and bought every Lantern for five years. And that's they were reprinted a year ago, right? Yeah. Are we well, still... Lantern is so good because 
it doesn't matter how actually good it is in your deck. The convenience factor on it is yes, so just high. Like, People are just like, lands. I don't care if technically <laughs> Dark Steel Lingot is better. This just makes it so I don't have to think as much. Right, exactly. I X land. So are we well, still plus, Fogo betting on Gilded Lotus then? I don't remember what the bet was. I, I don't, I don't I, remember I, anybody I just, who I, thought it was going to be... Because it's seeing less and less play every day. I think the card is dead forever. Like I am the one who said it wasn't dead forever, but I don't remember what the parameters were. I think I made a bet with somebody on Discord. I do have duplicate and solemn simulacrum on the ash heap of like this used to be an EDH staple, and Wizard still thinks it's good, but it's not anymore. I mean, I I, am. Come on, solemn's still good. Yeah, solemn's still good. Solemn is like certain colors. Certain colors, right? (laughs) Burnished Heart is as good as everyone remembers Solemn to be. Like, remember people play Mind's Eye? Because Wizard still does. Like, <laughs> there was stuff that everyone at the, like, five years ago was like, yeah, an EDH staple. Now it's like people like Duplicate? Nah, I, I, I replace it with a basic forest and my deck runs a lot smoother. Like, it, there's just some stuff that just, like, it just doesn't get there anymore. And even if Solemn's not really among that, it just feels like it's kind of in that class. I, like, it's I definitely not as good as it was. Mind's Eye are definitely in there. I, like I enjoyed the Spell Crumple reprint. I would like to oh, say yeah. that Gilded Lotus will not be $5. will be below $5 in a year. Yeah, but no one disagreed with that. Whatever the Somebody line in the was, Discord was, did. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Well, I think you and I may have taken it at like 2 or $3 or something. Because I am stocking up on Gilded Lotuses because it's certainly not no downside, yeah, but... I am hard passing. You can buy them for a dollar from people. I cannot remember the last time I put a Gilded Lotus into a deck. Really? I will buy it at a dollar and sell it at three all day, but I will never hold on to them at three. I will just, I just want to. Because you don't play Paradox Engine decks, (laughs) Josh. Even if I did, I just put signets and stuff, signets and stuff in because. Okay, I still play it in in several decks. I guess not all of them, but several. It's just like it's not the first mana. It's like not even the sixth mana rock, you know, but it's somewhere in the top ten. I like Narcomoeba at rare. Oh, if I guys, have a couple think... of ways to untap it, then I'll put it in, but that's it. It's too much. Five mana? Well, I guess I specifically... Rant, the... I rant before that. Yeah, the last deck I included it in was Nickel Bolas because you just need increasing amounts of mana to uh, to, to play and transform Bolas throughout the game. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I liked it there, but hmm. I, but it, it was. It was after all the Signets, after Lantern, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, after Talismans. And so basically every time they make a new rock that's less than five, Gilded is getting pushed farther and farther down that list. Yep. Yeah, you're probably right. And so every time play Lotus Commander's Guardians. Fear or something comes out, it's just less Gilded Lotuses that are going to get played. And so I think like in a couple of years, just you're just not going to play Gilded Lotus very often at all. Yeah, but then they'll reprint, or then they'll print Gilded Super Lotus. <laughs> so if anyone would like man, to hire this man and, yeah. for the card naming committee or whatever... <laughs> If anyone would like to make a Fogo bet, Megamorph, man, that was price, all me. About the price of Gilded Lotus, let me know. No, I'd rather a listener just tell us what you and I already bet on Gilded Lotus. Sander, stop playing WoW. Hey, I think the most noteworthy card in the entire set is clearly Impervious Gate Great Worm. Because, hey, we did it. No more good buy a box promos. Oh, you guys God. were worried. You guys were worried about the dangerous president of Assassin's Trophy being the buy a box promo, but don't worry, we'll never have another good one. We did it! I mean, aren't We you... eliminated any reason to buy a box at our LGS. We did it. I mean, I agree a little bit with the point you're making, but, like, we don't know that this is any sort of precedent or anything, right? Like, it could just as easily be a coincidence. Yep. I mean, it could also be the fact that like they could change the buy a box program to something other than just like a single promo that's not in the set and have it still be a good. Let, let me let me let me lay out two scenarios for you. Here's one. Impervious Great Worm just happened to be the next card that was going to be a buy a box promo. Here's the other scenario. In response to a bunch of negativity online, Wizards of the Coast got their acting gear in an extraordinary amount of time and changed the card. I'm going to take option it was A. A, it was a response to Nexus of Fate. I think it was in response to uh, Fire Song and Sunspeaker. No. But that wasn't... Pe- that, no, that wasn't no hard one cares. And the amount of bitching was equal How to the amount no, of bitching. No, no the ruckus raise was way less. No, man. I have sat at the Pro Tour and watched Saffron Olive blow up about Nexus of Fate repeatedly. Over and over again. And yeah, it's I don't not think even he said like a word about Fire com- Song. It's not like his points are invalid. I'm not saying it, I'm not even getting into that debate again. But the responses were not the same. 
at the beginning, and then when Nexus of Fate actually proved it was a card, because Firesong and Sunspeaker was never a card outside of EDH. Look, but when it, everyone thought Nexus of Fate wouldn't really get played, I they think were what, still bitching. I think what happened with Nexus of Fate is that they didn't test, they didn't think about the card, they didn't test it, they just made it. Now play design is almost sure to have a hand in what becomes these cards from now like from now on. Uh, I'm sure Impervious Gateworm was slotted in six months ago, if not longer. Um, but I very much doubt that they're going to have a broken one again. I, I think they're probably going to continue to program. It would be good, and then, and then no one's going to... But uh, it just has to be good in Commander or wherever they decide their target audience is, as long as it's not good in Standard. I wish they'd have a, have a Legendary, but like I get the number of parents and the number of guild leaders and all that lore bullshit has to add up, so they couldn't come up with like an odd number of... Of uh, legendary creatures, but it, if every Biobox promo is Fire Song and Sunspeaker tier, perfect. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's where Great Worm falls, I think. Now, because it's not, no, no one's going to play this in EDH. This is garbage. This card is garbage. Yeah, it's probably just not even a thing. Which speaks to the question: Who are they even trying to target with these Biobox promos? But well, I'd, I honestly, this set, you don't need a good Biobox promo for a set that sells itself. Yeah, this set's sweet. All right, so what else do you guys like, like from the set it's, here? It's to get people to buy it at the LGS and not to buy it at Cool Stuff or wherever they have a big disc. Have we talked about Ravnica Mythic Edition on here? Have we even had that argument? Can we not? Yeah, we cannot. That's fine. They're fine. Because people are bitching. They're like, oh, they're, they're unaffordable, and also I can only get them in North America. Well, which is it? I'm more, well, those are two I'm more people concerned about that them. Claim, Jason. Well, exactly. So if everybody is bitching about it from different angles, then it's probably fine. Uh, I would say store owners bitching about it have a legitimate point. Yeah. Well, the store owners can't be trusted because of uh, how the they marked up Commander's Arsenal and shit like that. That's what, like, just false, man. That's We've not never even marked any, close to true. We've never marked anything up above MSRP in my store, and I sure wish that people weren't asking whether or not they should buy booster boxes at our store or from Wizards directly. Like, that's shitty. But I'll say this. I, I, I don't know anything about this, so I can speak to this. Um, if I ever learn anything in the future, I can't. But for what I know right now, this is my guess, is that they were supposed to be the Hascon promos, and Hascon got canceled. And they needed something to do with them. I don't think it's a, uh, I don't think it's a coincidence. Hascon got canceled? Hascon got canceled for this year. They're uh, maybe going back to it next year. I don't know, but it's not happening in 2018. It is my guess that these were slated for that, and it's not a coincidence that they're being distributed in the same way that SDCC promos were, which were also, you know, a it's, promotional event. Card. Well, last year's Hascon promos were what, like the, the uns- Nerf gun and right. Transformers, right? right. What which was the were also that, sold. What was the reason that the convention got canceled? I don't know. I, I don't think it did super well. I mean, I think nobody Hasbro, went to it. I think yeah, and I think Hasbro ran it, and Hasbro is not exactly professional convention organizers right yeah, yeah company yeah. you know like yeah i don't really I, I don't know all the details but right i just I was it didn't just happen this year reason. it's my guess it, it's i mean the options are either that they just are sending a middle finger to store owners so they can make more money or they just had a product and needed to do something with it so well i don't think they would send a middle finger to store owners to make more money i just think that like I mean, if this had <laughs> ended up in stores it would have gotten marked up to like be even more and they just didn't want to hear not the over no not more than no. fifty dollars man and who cares that's the it's just it, whether stores do it or not that's not i mean at that point wizards may as well stop sending any limited product to to stores i mean that's wizards, like asking yeah master sets and stuff like that yeah like they're wizards and hasbro don't have I, i'm not gonna say they have the customer's best interest at heart to protect them from the greedy lgs's like, it's just, I mean, like I said, it's just my speculation that these were Hascon promos and they just needed something to do with them. But we'll see. If it becomes an every set kind of thing, then I have a gripe because it takes money from LGSs. You know, I hadn't heard that theory before, and it does make, it makes some sense. It's a thing Corbin made up, but like, what? I don't what? see it as a theory. <laughs> it's a, it's reasonable, I think. Yeah, yeah I mean, you just, I, you just I have no knowledge, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, like I said, if I knew anything about it, I couldn't say anything. So I can speculate all I want. <laughs> if I ever learned anything I mean, about it, I can't talk about it at all. Well, here's the it real question. Reasonable. Here's the real question, guys. Should people be there on October 3rd cl- cl- uh, clicking refresh as fast as humanly pl- possible to try and get their hands on this thing? No. Yeah. It's a good you buy. You think so, man? 
You, yeah, you absolutely. Because people 250? in Europe are bitching they can't buy it in North America. You can flip this for four hundred bucks. I don't know, man. These look like everybody's first altars. I mean, so did Chromanticore. So did the Invocations and Thought Season still one forty. Oh my god! No. Yeah. It's well, like... they they don't, but <laughs> especially the Amonkhet Invocations. You can't even read them. I mean, those are pretty ugly. Yeah, that's they look I, like, I know, like fourth altar. Yes, I I think these are cool. Like, actually, I like them. I think they're awesome. Um, I don't know. I, I feel picked, like so you guys picked think, a bunch of decent planeswalkers plus Liliana and Doretti. There's eight of them, right? Yeah. So each one of them needs to be seven. They so average out. They to just like, haven't revealed the eighth one, which is Raska, because right. they haven't revealed that card yet. Well, right. it averages out to oh, like eighteen it's, it's dollars a card a, from this set. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. averages it's, out it's to like eighteen dollars a card, I think. Well, Ral, Ral, Ral and Vraska are both in it, but Ral's been. Uh, spoiled yeah. or previewed so i mean what happens what happens three months after the set comes out when no one wants to pay the booster box half of that 250 dollars or whatever right you don't think you could buy these eight planeswalkers at 30 dollars or less average i'm talking about flipping these right away to the people okay that are outside okay sure yeah yeah, yeah. I'm north america board. that are bitching they can't buy them outside of north america i'm on, I'm on like, board for that i'm happy to ship these to anybody that wants to buy them anybody listens to this podcast that wants to pay me what 350 or whatever. I'd, however badly I decide to gouge you, and you can just say, "Oh, it's a." Yeah. No. Okay. I'm I'm on board for that plan. Flipping them. I just. Yeah. I, I just I, think that once those packs, on these. once those packs sort of cease to have value, because it's 16 normal packs of Guilds of Ravnica, and then eight packs well, which have a masterpiece in them. Blake couldn't tell people when they were like tweeting at him. He couldn't tell people whether they're regular packs or whether they had. He, the, like, the part he wasn't sure on, and I still don't know the answer to, is with whether they have the token or emblem card in them. But they guaranteed yeah. have a mythic, yeah. a regular mythic rare, and the normal amount of comments and well, a regular in. mythic rare. So if they're not regular yeah. packs, where did those packs come from? If they weren't specifically designed to go in this product, I mean, mm. so that is a hole in your has, theory, Corbin. No, I mean, not, they but, they but also on I, promos if they have random weird packs to go with them. I want to back up and ask a question here because I think your math's a little off, right? They don't have to be 30 bucks each. You still get the Guilds of Ravnica b booster box, which, you know, on the low end is going to be worth somewhere in the $80 range, Well, it's right? not well, a it's booster not box. Full box. It's, it's 18 a, packs, it's, right? It's, it's oh, right. It's 24 packs. It's yeah, 16, 24 it's 24 packs. packs. It's 24 packs. Okay, so it's two... It's, yeah, so it's two-thirds of a booster box. Okay. That's so what I'm saying. Yeah, it's just like three 55 months. 55 bucks. Three months in, like, what value... Like, if we're if we're specifically talking about the you know the planeswalkers, yeah, I mean it comes down to whether or not you value what you value those packs at, I suppose. Well, the planeswalkers at. Right, I'm saying, but like the the rest of the pack, if you don't care about the the sixteen, I mean the packs deals, are going to have a value because you're going to be able to go like, well, you know, thirty six packs of whatever is more or less something. You right, know, and just, it. It, it just depends on whether or not you actually care about that or if you just want the Masterpiece Planeswalkers, you know? Yeah. Because it's it's not exactly easy to trade loose packs uh, or really get anything for them, you know? And then you're just busting them, and that is that is the crapshoot it is. So we'll see. But I agree that we don't know how many, how many of them there's going to be. Um, if it's anything like SDCC promos, then there's not going to be very many. So... But I have been able to get the SDCC promos on the Hasbro website, you know, without being a crazy person like waking up in the middle of the night or something uh, for the last few years. So there's definitely enough that like, yeah, if it's equal to that, that you can get them. I mean, who knows what the demand well, will be. This past year has burned out real quick, didn't it? I thought it did, so, but, but you I could. Don't know. It did, but you could still. It wasn't like insanity. No, it wasn't like ten minutes, but there was also because yeah, exactly. I, I tried to get them like an hour after they went live, but I had a lot of trouble with the Hasbro store just logistics of logging. Yeah, some people just literally couldn't tell yeah. if their order went through. My order was yeah. just, it just got canceled well, like at the last stage every time, just by like, oh, our processing error, boop boop. Yeah, well, their website. Yeah, it said <laughs> yeah. boop boop out loud too, and that was that was the worst. I need this Nickel Bolas comma Planeswalker for my Bolas deck though. I've got the STCC uh, Godfarer one. Now I need this one. I mean, you're going to be able to buy it. <laughs> like, Yeah. It's going to feel bad. I have a set foil in there right now. Gosh. Worth it, though. All right. So anything else from the set you guys want to talk about before we wrap up this week? I didn't know the Golgari uh, legend got previewed today. Uh, which one? 
Yeah, he's, Wedge. Uh, that was Wedge's. It was yeah. pretty late in the day. Oh, Izani, yeah. Izani. Thousand Eyed for uh, two black, black, green, green. Elf Shaman Undergrowth. When Izani enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one black and green insect for each creature in your graveyard. Uh, black and a green. Sack a creature. Gain life. Draw a card. She is a 2-3. That card is bananas. I don't think it's a strong commander, but I think it goes in decks. Yeah, I agree with that. Just a card. Yeah. It's a cool card. It's just a card, though. So, Actually, I mean, I this think, is. A, I think people will build around it, but like it's. It's yeah. worse than Gerard, I think. It's just a card. It's just a card you put people in your like deck. People like to build new stuff. That's what everyone discounts. Like, yeah, Gerard's better, but like people want to build new stuff. People are gonna build this just because it's new and sexy. Not that Azani's sexy like the art per se. <laughs> yeah, we got it, Jason. <laughs> Not that she's not. <laughs> if you're, if, she, if co being covered in bugs is your thing, then I'm already covered in bugs. Like, what is she going to give me that's worse? <laughs> well, like, um, I've got I, I, I've got like antibiotic resistant staff. Like, she's going to be worse off than I am. I think. You said you like Amara, Josh. Yeah, because I'll give your listeners a little um, a little tease here. I am playing it on the next game nights. Ooh, all right. Ooh, there's that value. Are you tapping her to Glare of Subduel and Convoke? I have no comment on the remainder of the deck. But, uh, <laughs> oh, I, you can't I, tell us about a card that was printed in 2005. Interesting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Glare of Subduel. I don't know. I can't even. I mean, Josh, tell for people who don't. I mean, it is it is possible that some of our audience isn't uh, Game Nights watchers. Unlikely, but possible. I mean, how... Uh, I mean, it's been really awesome to the community to say people have obviously loved it. What has it been like from the inside, uh, you know, running game nights over the past? How long has it been now? Uh, we're coming up on two years yeah. in October. Um, it's been tiring <laughs> is the one <laughs> word that I can come up with. He's going to do 100 percent of the editing. It's yeah. a Well, it's not 100 percent anymore. I have gotten some help, which is great. Um, but Please don't come on my own podcast and correct me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to give credit where credit is due. But yeah, it's an it's a tremendous amount of work, and uh, you know I, I understand that people don't really don't get it, and that's fine because the whole goal of it is that you can just sit back, watch it without thinking about something like that. Well, that's it. We put it on in the background when we're playing Commander quite a bit. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I actually it's funny because I actually I, watch it. I don't put it on the background disrespectfully. <laughs> I had a friend from high school who I haven't talked to since high school, and he texted me the other day, and he's like, I walked into a game store, and you were on the TV in here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's something we hear a lot is a lot of people put it on in game stores and stuff, and, and, and we like that. But, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of work. That's all I can say. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm really happy people enjoy it, and that's really what keeps me going. So, I mean, if people didn't enjoy it, I would have stopped a while ago. Right, right. Well, I love the uh, the – it's a very high profile way um, to to showcase people who aren't the typical magic player. And I think that's, but playing like, you know, this isn't handing a celebrity a deck and playing a walkthrough game with a learn to play deck. You know, these are, like, we're actually playing magic. And I, th yeah, I and think that was, that's really that, cool. That was the goal of the show from the very beginning was to not pander as far as like, have people that know how to play because we we want to show what's fun about the game to people who you know don't play so they can watch it we want to make sure they they could watch it and get something from it but at the same time to us what's fun about the game is the decision making and the reasons behind the decision and the fact that like i think a lot of people just naturally think card games are all about luck and you need to demonstrate to them that no it's about the decisions that you make and the choices that you have and why you make x choices and that determines the outcome of the game that's what makes games fun and so we're always trying to highlight that aspect of it yeah and i think it bridges the gap between say something like spell slingers and you know it's hardcore magic content better than anything else out there right well, i appreciate you it that's our goal yeah it's it's great well can't you can't come on the podcast and uh, not expect us to compliment you on the thing that's taken over your life? So <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, then let me com compliment uh, you and Jason on your children. Oh well, thank you. I do like them. Yeah, they seem pretty. You cool. like my kid? Well, your kid gives you, can you have her. your kid gives you <laughs> shit, which I definitely like. Nine thousand bucks. She's yours. We're nine thousand dollars. That is yeah. almost as expensive as my kid was. 
Oh, that's just the start, gentlemen. No, oh, yeah, trust me. <laughs> I don't understand. Huh? I don't understand. Why did you pay nine grand for your your kid? It cost ten grand to have our kid actually, because oh, in the hospital, oh, healthcare right. in America. Because your wife doesn't work at a hospital like mine does. Good call. Yeah, we had insurance and it cost us ten grand. It was sweet. PSA for anyone out there though, you can actually negotiate down hospital bills. You don't think you can because it's health, and why would someone overcharge you for saving your life or whatever? <laughs> but yeah, you can negotiate that down just like you know a car payment or car used car. So. Enjoy that. True story. Advice. Is it really eighty dollars for an ace bandage? I'm not sure. That's correct. <laughs> anyways. All right. Anything else you guys want to touch on before we get out of here this week? Yeah. You know what? I'm I'm starting to regret offering my daughter to you for ninety thousand. <laughs> think you could get a, <laughs> think you get a little more? Is that? Yeah. I, can I get a price check on a white baby? Well, are we gonna? <laughs> uh, it, it's our trades accepted. Is there a trading? <laughs> is there give, a trading bonus? Are you going to give me your kid? I, yeah, Dude, I got some reserve give me your list kid cards, who bro. doesn't go to sleep. Yeah, I'm going to wait for Dude, rotation. Daughter, yeah. I, seriously, Corbin, I would not trade my my daughter for your son because I would not be on this podcast right now because I'd still be upstairs trying to put him to bed. That is generally how. Because he'd be like, I don't live here. Where are my parents? He would just scream in your ear, "I want my mama," like he did to me all last week. <laughs> but don't worry. Well, be fair. Don't worry. As soon as Marianne gets home and puts him to bed, he starts screaming, "I want my dad out." He's just he's already, so he's, yeah. He's already got you guys yeah, figured out. He's a cunning little little bastard. <laughs> now, all kids are like that. My daughter figure out. If she just tells us she's trying to poop. Then we'll like do whatever she says. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, Josh, thanks for coming on, man. We really appreciate it. Always good to have you on. And uh, hopefully, we're all gonna catch up here in an event in the future where I'm not working. Yeah, you gotta. The first step there is you gotta not work an event. Yeah, yeah that is. It's, I'm it's a choice. On on we yeah. yeah. We'll see what the. We don't have the GP schedule for next year yet, but uh, which is really I mean, weird. There's probably gonna be we a know Vegas. Three of them. Yeah, there'll be a Vegas. Well, dude, we drafted I, Battle Bond like seven times. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> it was the Josh, best. I, I, that does I sound fun. Craps, I played craps without you at GP Detroit, and dude. I lost money. <laughs> and I think I know why. Is it because you weren't with me? Because we got rich Sunday night in Vegas. Oh man, yeah. Oh man, I heard I you guys like, screaming over there. Yeah, we were oh. killing it that night. Oh, I was we so made, sad Jason, I couldn't go over. There. Jason couldn't remember any of it, but the next morning he's like, "Why do I have three hundred dollars more than I started with?" Yeah, no, I woke up with a picture on my phone of just a handful <laughs> of like twenty five dollar chips. <laughs> I was like, "Why? Why did I take a picture of chips?" But apparently, See, I Corbin, like if you don't work bucks. the GP, you can do that every night. I know. I, well, here's the thing, man. Uh, by the way, people listening, you got through this whole episode without a Patreon pitch, but we have, Oh, I, you messed up, man, but we have set some, you're welcome everybody, some new Patreon goals. And one of them is, uh, an event next year, which Jason DJ and I will all commit to being at, uh, where none of us are working, um, you know, at a booth or on coverage and we're going to, do the patrons pick the event working to put on a great show for you all. Yeah, that's right. So we're going to do the patrons pick the event. I mean, we haven't really got that far. I don't. Our patrons are idiots, so I really don't. <laughs> set a like, number for us... Vegas. Wait, wait. Set a number for Vegas, and if and if you guys hit that number, are you gonna th- are you gonna throw your own uh, like BSB event at, That's the at idea. whatever this event is? Yeah, okay, then like... I'll show up to that event if it's at Vegas. Ooh. That's. A, I mean, I kind of assumed Ooh. it would Celebrity be Celebrity attendees, everybody. Yeah, and I'll get Jimmy to do it too if he's there. Oh man, if he's there. Yeah. If he might be on a movie there, set somewhere. To... Yeah, if he's not too busy being a famous movie star. Yeah, hey, well, if he's not he in like Crazy it, Rich Asians too, then I'll get him to Vegas. <laughs> I think Jimmy's the only Asian actor I recognize that wasn't in Crazy Rich Asians too. He auditioned. Yeah. <laughs> so like his you're brother not crazy Freddy. enough. Yeah. <laughs> I would at this point I would be surprised if they don't put him in because you're right. The, like who else are they going to put in? Just all the same characters? They need some new characters. <laughs> I will tell you that uh, my wife is very excited for Mulan. She's. And this is actually funny. Well, I was at a party a couple weeks ago and everyone was drinking. And at some point someone decided, I think this is just what happens when you turn 30. This is what becomes fun for you. But someone put on YouTube of um, just soundtracks from old Disney movies and everyone was singing. So <laughs> I, obviously everyone was singing, I'll make a man out of you. And I was like, oh, I know a guy who's like in the live action remake, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go see, I get to see people sing this or whatever. And some guy just lost his mind. He was like, What? You know Jimmy. I don't Wong? believe you. You're lying. You, Why what? would you name drop? He just kept going. I wasn't even name party. dropping. Get out. It was just like a casual, like, <laughs> oh, this we were like Mulan came on. I was like, oh, this is cool. I like we're gonna go see this because a guy knows in it, you know? Like 
It was, and he was so excited. But yeah, I, my wife is very excited. We're gonna go check it out because well, uh, I, I'm, I I'm like excited uh, to hear his VO work in the the Wish Dragon too. Like he's he's crushing it right now, and I, I think uh, I think it's uh, only gonna get better for him. So if we want to see him at Vegas, I don't know. We're gonna have to catch him on a good. Well, weekend, let's hope Vegas happens. Step one is Vegas happening. We need the schedule for next year. Step two is actually hitting the Patreon goal. It is the next one up. So go check it out at patreoncom slash Brewery. Wow, I'm just stealing Jason's lines here, but uh, we'll we'll make it happen. But I will for say, sure. if you guys do hit that Patreon goal, and there's going to be an event at Vegas, I'll go, and I and if I can, I'll get Jimmy to go. So okay, well there you I'll go. I'll make that pledge to that. your that's, patrons that's awesome. right now. Yeah, yeah, this is this would be great. I think Josh is just relieved he doesn't have to organize his own party because <laughs> I, I know how much work that was, and <laughs> yeah. we all had a the two parties you guys did at previous Vegases. I had a great time. Oh, that was great. You probably had an okay time, but you guys look real busy trying to, to facilitate the whole thing. I was like, man, I, I feel bad because these guys are so generous, giving us stuff that Wizards has given them to give away and just shouting themselves hoarse, trying to be heard over the din of all those people. <laughs> and I I, well, I understand yeah. why you would want to not do that, but here's the deal. We're so much less popular than you. We'll be in a much smaller ballroom. And <laughs> it will make it much easier, yeah. You won't have to sign any autographs because everyone's <laughs> like, who are those scrubs? I think they listen to the podcast. Oh, cool. So... <laughs> <laughs> I will say we did not do the party this year because Jimmy couldn't make it, and I was not going to do it by myself. So that's fair. What about you? Got to you got to conscript Vinny, get him to pull his weight. I know, right? <laughs> well, this has been a long outro. Um, hey, I want to. I'll take my turn personally thanking you for coming on the cast. This is probably the third, fourth time you've been on the cast. We always love having you and. You back me up when I say stuff about Commander, and I appreciate that. <laughs> well, you're the EDH Ryan Seacrest. I mean, what else am I supposed to do? That is true. <laughs> That's a good point. You I'm know what? Of all the everywhere. memes in our Discord, no one's memed that before. Because they they don't respect it. It's, it's not, not as much of, of an... Looking... It just needs to be more insulting. They only meme the insults. Yeah, it's not a picture of me looking fat, so like, no one can <laughs> do anything with that. <laughs> I don't know oh, how it could be more insulting than me. being compared that to Ryan Seacrest. Okay, what, sorry. TJ? Uh, shout out to Anderson LeClaire, who, uh, number one, took that photo, and number two, top 16 uh, GP Detroit this past weekend with his team. Nice. Woo, Congrats wearing to him, a man. Brainstorm Brewery shirt the whole time. Good job, Andy. Oh, wearing the Guy Fieri Flaming Crocs, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling people, you wear Brainstorm Brewery gear, you do good in tournaments. That's just all there is to actually, it. Actually, no. Um, scrub out? So here's no. what happened. He ate oh day one wearing the shirt. Him and his team crushed it. And then his teammate would not let him wear the same shirt day two. What? Does he understand how these things work? I I okay. don't know. I did not have that conversation. Uh-oh, what happened then, day two? But then uh, he went like however many matches you need to get top sixteen. He ended up going. They X4. probably went. They probably went X and three. Actually, it was X four. I think X four. That wow. So X4. they went two and so they hey, went two and four on you, day two. I don't know. I'm. I don't know. One hundred percent. I just know they got sixteenth place as a team and got like I think it was four hundred bucks. They might have been X three, but. Hey, but yeah, he no, wasn't probably, wearing, no, you're probably right. It would have been X4 with that many with 500 teams. He wasn't wearing the BSB shirt day two. His teammate wouldn't let him. They didn't win the entire event. Yeah, so, there you go. That is scientific evidence, right That's there. That's right. That's right. Every All single right, match, he he won. <laughs> he won day one. He came over to me. He gave me a high five. And he, went, he listened to the new Kanye song. Yep, yep, which, yep, yep. Uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> no, like it was his ritual. He he came over. Corbin's on Team Taylor Swift, whereas I'm on the I'm on Team Neither. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty savage that she dropped her new album on the anniversary of his mom dying. Though that's pretty savage. What? What? You didn't? She did that. That was a thing she did. I didn't make that up. Taylor Swift dropped her album. Bro, on the don't you don't you dying. dare insult Taylor Swift. Oh, what's she going to do? Drop a, uh, an album on the anniversary of my mom dying? I, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I yeah. would never call her the B word, so we don't have to worry about that. Oh, there you go. All right, everybody. Did you guys see on that the... one thing where uh, somebody thought that Machine Gun Kelly was the the conservative girl who carries assault rifles onto campuses? That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. This is Brainstorm Brewery. We're over our time limit. We'll get on out of here. Josh, thanks for coming on. We will see you all next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Yeah, thank you Don't so much for coming us an on, email. Josh. Don't send us an email saying an AR-15 isn't a machine gun. We won't read it. <laughs>